Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're going over part two of our VR exploration. All right, class, welcome back. Mr. G here. We're going over more in-depth learning on how to start incorporating VR into your classroom. So the first thing we got to do is talk about how to set this thing up in the classroom. So we're going to strap the headset on and we're going to get into the Guardian first. Okay, so once you're inside the headset, you're going to set up the Guardian, Guardian initially. It's going to pop up a little thing that says that you need to set up or make a Guardian. What that is, is you have two different options. You have room scale and you have stationary. Stationary is going to be isolated to where you are in space, so you're not really moving around as much. If you are sitting in a stationary location, that would be the one that I would recommend for you because it kind of keeps everything nice and tighter, close together. The only reason I would do room scale from a single seated position is A, if you have a rolly chair, because uh, you will probably exceed the space that stationary is going to provide you. Also, the uh, when you reach out, if your arm is going to extend past the guardian location, that is, that's going to throw up that guard anytime that you're out, in, if anytime that you're in the headset and you're moving things around, and that's going to become an issue that you're going to see in general. The other option that you have is room scale. Room scale is a little more uh steps to set it up but it's super easy overall so when you set up room scale you first have to identify the floor and you do this for stationary as well so you have a whole bunch of little purple x's that kind of float up midway up your waist and you're going to grab that with the trigger with the trigger button the index button that we talked about last video you're going to grab it with that and you're going to push it all the way down to the floor you definitely want it to be touching the floor it might float just a little bit above the floor and that's fine but as close to the floor as you can possibly get is what is essential remember this is virtual reality so you're setting up space in the real world so you have to think about that in relation to where you are so you can actually manipulate and grab objects in front of you once you have that set up, now we have to set up the boundaries of the garden itself. So we set up the floor space so we understand how far from the from where we are at at our vision level down to the floor that is going to uh, be the space that we're, that the guardian is going to be placed into. The guardian boundary is where you're going to create the wall barrier between the virtual reality space that you're working in and the outside room that you're in. If you're inside of a, a closed area, try and keep at least a foot distance between the wall of the guardian and the wall itself. Uh, just case in point, if you're playing gorilla tag or anything else where you're going to have to do quick moves movements out and you're going to go through that guardian wall real easily you don't want your hand to go through the guardian and hit the wall that's just not going to be pleasant um I, I don't know how many times i've smashed my own hand at home playing around too close to a fireplace and my hand will hit the brick and it does not feel good at all uh so make sure that you keep that space inside of the guardian now, once you have your guardian set, now you'll go ahead and hit OK through that a couple times where it says OK that you establish your guardian, OK, confirm that you're ready to go into the virtual play, play space. Now you're in the hub. The hub is the location that you pick for your virtual environment. They have several to choose from. You can even make your own virtual environments now. So if you want to have more of a classroom setup, you could possibly do that. Uh, either you're creating it or there's a number of uh, creators that are building these things all the time. So you might be able to find one that you can import and create as your own space now once inside the hub you have a couple basic things one take a look around you're in vr now you're in a different playing space altogether if you have a student who like just loves space there's a space station that you can hang out in there's one there's uh several calming ones i like to personally hang out in japan a lot so i go to my uh japanese pagoda or they have a kind of a modern um Asian style themed loft, which I also got set up in one of the other headsets. It's a great place just to hang out for five minutes and get a get a pause from reality. From this, you can you're going to be able to access all of your games as well as see the different store options and and various options that you have in front of you. It, take a minute to play through these. Here's one caveat though: when you set up your Oculus account initially, you had to put in a pin. Make sure you remember what that pin is and you don't share it out with anybody because that is what is your purchasing pin. Uh, think of it like a debit card. If you are going to buy an app and you click to, to buy it, you're gonna have to input that pin to get that purchase fully go, to, to download and purchase that game. If the game is free, you don't have to put in the pin, it'll download it automatically and you don't have to worry about that. So there is a caveat there. So if you don't want students just to go and randomly start downloading stuff in the headset, just kind of set that up ahead of time so that you can make sure that they don't do that. 
At the bottom of that front bar, you have a couple different things. You have your clock, your Wi-Fi, your battery signal, which is on the far left side. So you can click on that and you can get to your settings. You can mute the microphone. You can report a bug if there's a bug going on in the system. You have those options in that section. Next to that, you have the explore section, which there's a lot of cool things to explore. You have everything from Oculus TV to different uh, interactive games challenges that are going on you can check those out the next one after that is the store where you're going to get all of your apps that you have that you're running into after that you have your people those that are your friend connections that you have in, in Facebook if you have a headset and you're friends with somebody on a different hall in a different class that also has a headset you can have those two work together so you can do a collaborative unit between your class and another class and they can work together in the headset without actually having to leave the room which is kind of handy Last one there on that bar is the share button. The share button is just so that you can uh, s live stream what is going on the headset to your class. I'm gonna go in that in just a minute. We're gonna come back to that. Uh, and the last thing, I don't know I said that's the last thing. There is one other thing on that bar and that's the what we call the waffle. That's uh, a term that we've been using for the last couple of years over here because of um, Office 365, it's a waffle. There's got to be a better term, I know. Uh, it's the app drawer, that is where you click and you have all of your apps that pop up in front of you and you can then select any of the games that you're going to use that, um, that, you can, that you can play and create from. There we go, okay. Then we have the waffle, so we have all of our games that we have available to us. I've got a bunch of stuff downloaded on my headset because, well, let's, let's be honest, I use mine a lot for lots of different stuff. So, excellent, excellent exercise games, Gorilla Tag, O shape. Uh, Rec Room can be really ex a good exercise one if you find the right game. And then Les Mills Body Combat or is a new one that I just got. Lots of super cool stuff that uh, we can do for exercise. Now, Walkabout Mini Golf Forever Bowl and Rec Room and Gorilla Tag are all those ones that are super perfect for collaboration. So if you're collaborating with another with the teacher on doing different stuff, lots of stuff in there. Okay, so once you're in here and you have all these different apps, let's go ahead and click on these three dots on the side. You have three different ones to work from here so you can see the details of the app, how much space it's taking up, what permissions it has access to. Does it have access to your microphone? Can you share from there? All that stuff is in there and then uninstall. There's several times where you're going to be in a app that you're going to need to uninstall and then reinstall. Case in point, Gorilla Tech. Gorilla Tech just came out with an update to like two, three days ago. I had to go into the app and pick the which version I wanted, and then I had to uninstall it and reinstall it, so I had a different map to play in. Uh, doing that just as a test phase so that we could test stuff out, and very important for us to see. Now, Oculus TV, I just kind of started diving into this a little bit more, and I think it's really, really useful because of all the stuff that we can do. So you have uh, tons of different videos that are here that we can walk through uh spacewalkers is really surreal really fun there's a uh, fantastic one on here where it's um you're taking off in a spaceship in a rocket um here we have 360 video of waitress so we have a stage performance here show and tell somebody is is giving you a uh little art display piece here tons of different videos that you can see from uh creators and different perspectives concerts are on here they have games uh, uh, uh baseball games football games that you can that you can watch in 3d uh then we have soloist here's the nfl highlights you can watch those in 3d here's lakers basketball in 3d there's an even an app on here for the olympics so i could watch the olympics as though i was actually in as long as though i was in beijing so lots of different places to check out super cool stuff. You can have one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorials of what's going on in the spaceship, space station on the ISS from astronauts. They sh they have a 3D camera, a 360 camera up there, so you can see all these different things. It's just super cool. All the different ass things that you can do in here. Uh, and again, those that that's a free app. YouTube VR is a free app. Gravity Sketch is a free app. This is one of my go-to ones. Let's go ahead and open it up real quick. This one is where we design everything in 3D inside the headset. Um, I'm super huge fan of being able to get in here and draw from all my space. So down here we have our drawing plane on the bottom. I'm going to click my two interior controller handles, grab, and then I can pull up 
and I can then resize it. So you see it's at 50% now. I can take it out at 20. I can expand it out as big as I need it. Let's go ahead and start this at 33%. So it's at a third. Using my controller on the right to draw with, using my controller on the left to pick my tool brushes from. So hitting that little purple button, I can select which piece I have here to draw with if I need to grab some other tutorials or if I need to go to my tutorials on how do I do stuff in here, hit the little blue button and I can go through the different aspects down here at the bottom where I have a little graduation hat. These This tells me little mini movies on move how objects, this controller you will works. use your drawing hand. Which is super handy. Nice thing to use. Let's close you out. Now I can use this one to draw from. Close that little binder right there. So I can zoom down to have just a small pin line from it and then I can use the knob see how I'm using it to widen up so I can change which shape I have and then using my little ball right here and grabbing that interior controller I can move that shape around to a different location same thing with the other one let's put it up here and then let's say I want to duplicate this I can actually grab it with one hand using my trigger finger so just that red red part happen. I can then grab that and I can duplicate that shape. So now I have this nice three dimensional form coming up in space. Let's set you over here to the side. Grabbing both and rotating. I can then manipulate to see those lines. I can look at it from underneath, zoomed in. See how I took my play space and I just moved it down a little bit. So I can then get in and actually manipulate all of these structures single-handedly side by side and this is something where if i'm doing this as a drawing aspect or if i'm doing this from a modeling aspect this is great for dealing with students who don't understand concepts because they need to actually see the concepts in motion see the concepts in play so now if i'm doing math and let's say that we have one two three four five six i have six single lines and i have two thick lines well what's what's my percentage so then i'm going to need let's say this is 2x i don't like the way that that looks so i'm going to go over to my little red button here i'm going to click it one two three and then i can erase that stuff come back again put my little x in there so now i can figure out if i have these two thicker sections I want to fill in for the other sections here, I can then see it as I'm filling it in. So one, two, three to fill in the rest of these. So X equals three of the uh, pieces that are not completed. So that would be three equals X. So we've got simple math that we can pro pro program in here and the way that we can run different plotting points. So we have our, our X and Y axis plus a Z axis to give a three dimensional space. There's all these different things that we can learn in here in different forms and different spaces. And I just think this is a great, great tool to use in class. All right, so let's close this out. I'm going to hit my, see my little back arrow here. I'm going to hit it, click it once. It's going to bring up the, the quit menu. So I'm just and that's good. And if I need to rotate where I'm at in space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out my hand until I see my grid walk to one side. So I have the nice long side to work with. Reorient it. What I'm doing is I'm pressing that O button until it goes all the way around. That will reorient where I am in space. So just starting to dive in into these little aspects here. I'm going to go through different uh programs that we can use different apps for different classes and how we can use those two things to teach from so i'm, I'm going to do like again this little mini series here into vr so we can talk about all the different fun things that we do so let me uh let me pop back over to the main camera all right the worst thing about coming back out of there I definitely know i got a ring on my face and having vr hair that's but again, we're just starting to scratch the surface on the fun things that we can do inside of VR so we can incorporate more fun activities for our students so that we can engage them in a different manner. Again, education has changed. We have to move with that and understand that that's how that's how education is working going into the future. And knowing that we have to add in those little two 
two things and or adding in those things and making it slightly modified that is an important thing to know going forward let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do don't forget to like subscribe share it on all the various platforms get the message out there to me teachers friends students that we possibly can want to educate everybody in just education make everything better if you got a question comment or concern during today's class raise your hands in the comments below have to answer those questions from my classmates as always i will see you guys next class so until then catch you guys later later guys